Hey everyone, Dr. Dobson. Uh, we're going to be doing a 4.7 MOL in this video. Uh, you'll notice that I got a webcam. I also got a little Wacom tablet so I can mark up the screen to hopefully make the videos a little bit more engaging. Uh, I'm also planning on posting more of the raw footage of the procedure so that I can scrub through everything for a more kind of authentic experience as opposed to the trimmed videos that just shows the stuff that goes well. Uh, this one's trimmed, so we'll, we'll get into it. Um, it's a 4.7 MOL. This is mid prep. Um, here are a couple more photos of the process. It had a large composite in it that we'll be removing, and the meso part broke away. So, uh, mid prep, post prep, matrixed, and before restoring, and then there it is restored. The lingual wall is all a shooed cusp. So, we'll get the rubber dam on. Oh, there's the tooth. You can see that the mesial bit is missing and there's lots of white chalky enamel here which we can tell is going to be a lot of decay under there so we'll get the rubber dam on clamping the wisdom tooth would have given um, a block of articane and then a long buckle and we'll get started with a ks1 on a high speed and just removing the bulk of the decay and the old composite material going to be a large box and we're going to tell the patient that there's a good chance that we might get close to the nerve so root canal might be needed use a flame to round off sharp corners of the box snip the septum so it doesn't get in the way and then continue removing the old composite material mid prep still got a ways to go still more composite there so we're gonna continue with the large round and we'll start using our slow speed or small carbide and getting all the soft tooth tissue out of there until we're back on hard tooth tissue everywhere especially around the DEJ we're fine leaving this bit of uh, decay right in the middle um, because we have a clean rim. Still a little ways to go here and there, but that's what I like to do um, to prevent drilling into the pulp. So we'll carry on. Last burr, I always like to use a large round so that the internal surfaces of the prep are nice and smooth and round so that the material adapts well. I find that Equia Forte is prone to trapping bubbles and so it's important to have the right technique so we'll matrix the tooth we're just going to use a sectional there's enough of lingual wall there to put the separator ring on so a sectional is going to work great but we're going to have to overfill the crap out of it so that it doesn't uh, leave us any voids along that lingual wall get the separator on burnish Another thing about this tooth in front of it is that I would imagine that this one probably broke away the mesial part because for some reason there's kind of two, two composite materials here. You can see this interface between the two. Probably maybe there's an open contact and somebody went in and tried to fix it, but poor form leaving um, two types of restorative materials within the same tooth. I usually like to remove everything and then have one homogeneous um, material like in this 4.7 that we're doing here. So we're ready to restore. I like to do the five second phosphoric acid etch to condition for Equia Forte, and then we'll put in two ca capsules so that we don't end up with voids or anything. And then we'll pack it in a little bit with the cotton pellet. And then we'll wait five minutes for it to set, remove the matrix assembly. We had a little bit of uh, material go out that little um, hole in the matrix. So we just had to cut it off and then remove the band with the how pliers and then we'll just start shaping the filling back to uh, normal anatomy and we'll tell the patient that um, chance of developing pulpitis although we got fortunate here so far um, and probably a crown is a good idea as well this was just a spec uh, that we did and he just wanted that one tooth fixed so but I would imagine that this will do quite well in the long term. 
take the rubber dam off and check the bite. And once we're happy, then we'll check the contact and then coat it with the varnish and that's going to be it. Here's the final.